Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the serverless framework to deploy other AWS resources. As I've said in previous videos, it's very interesting to use the serverless.yaml config file to define all the resources that your application uses. And that is because serverless will deploy them for you. It will worry about rolling back changes if something goes wrong and you only have one file that contains everything you need to deploy your entire application stack to AWS. So if in the future you wanna move from AWS account, all you have to do is run SLS deploy again with your new credentials and then move your data over. So here I am in Visual Studio Code and I'm going to open up the serverless.yaml file. It's the same one that we've used in all the previous videos. Uh, and if I scroll down, way at the bottom, I can see a section called resources. And in the comments, it says, you can add CloudFormation resource templates here. Now, CloudFormation is an AWS service that provisions other AWS resources based on a template that you give it. So here in this section, we can give it a template or we can give it many templates. So let's assume that we're building an application that allows users to upload some files. Well, to store these files, we're gonna need an S3 bucket. So let's create one right now. I'm gonna uncomment the resource section here. And as you notice, it already has a sample for an S3 bucket. So here we say that the new resource is of type S3 bucket, and it has some property. The property is bucket name, and the value is my new bucket. Now let's change that a bit so that it makes more sense. Instead of new resource, I'm gonna call this uh, upload bucket. And this is just uh, a name that we give to everything we define under it. You can see it as a variable because other resources can reference this, they can depend on it. Now I'm gonna change the bucket name and I could call this the uploads bucket. But what if I have a few applications on my AWS account and you know, a couple of them need an uploads bucket, well, then this is not gonna make sense. And also what happens if one application has a development environment and a production environment? You wanna keep these things separate. So instead what we can use is we can use the variables we've defined before. We can use these variables, for example, we can use the name of our service and we could use the stage that our service is in right now. So let's do that. The syntax for this is a dollar sign and then curly braces. So I'm gonna say self service then we're going to say dash i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to say self provider dot stage and then i'm going to add another dash so what this is going to do is it's going to look up the service name in this case that's awesome api then it will add a dash then it will look up the stage that we're in right now in provider so that's here provider stage now we're in the development environment and then it will add another dash and then uploads so let's save this file, let's run SLS deploy, and let's see what happens. All right, so it has finished deploying. Let's go into Chrome here. Let's open up the S3 management console. Let's take a look if it has created our bucket. And yeah, sure enough, there is awesome API dev uploads, the uploads bucket that we just created. Now there's also another bucket that has the same name, but this is the bucket that serverless uses to uh, deploy all of our functions code and to deploy the template to CloudFormation. So this is one that is used internally by the framework itself. Now let me give you also another example. Let's assume that we also need a DynamoDB table to store information about our users, for example. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna make a new resource and I'm gonna call this resource user table. And this is gonna be of type AWS DynamoDB table. And I'm gonna give it some properties as well. And these properties are gonna be, we're gonna give it a table name. And I'm gonna use the same strategy as I've used before for the bucket name. So I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna call this table, uh, the users table, for example. And then I'm gonna give it some attributes. So I'm gonna say that each object in this table needs at least a user ID. So I'm gonna say attribute definitions. And then I'm gonna say attribute name is user ID. And I'm gonna give it a type as well. I'm gonna say that our user IDs, they're gonna be UUIDs for example. So that's of type string. And in DynamoDB you also need a key schema. You need to say which of your attributes is the primary key and which is the sort key. 
So I'm going to say that we have just one. We have an attribute uh, name email. Email is a key and the type of this key is hash. And you can also define a sort key if you want. I'm also going to provision some capacity for this table. Again, those familiar with DynamoDB will know what this is all about. So I'm going to say provision, uh, provision throughput equals and then I'm going to say, say read capacity units is one and write capacity units is units is also one. There we go. So let's save that file and let's deploy that as well to AWS. And let's see if everything goes according to plan. Oops, and I made a little mistake here. I said that the key is uh, the email field, but I don't have an email field. This should be the user ID field. So let's run SLS deploy again. And it's interesting to note that even though it has issued an error here, uh, it actually rolled back all the changes that it has already done. So let's say that I added a few functions to my application and it was already deploying those functions and then it hit an error. Well, then it will roll back the changes. So it will delete my functions again or it will move them back to a previous version. So my application is always in a valid state. That's the benefit of using uh, serverless.yaml. And so here I have demonstrated that benefit without preparing for it. So that's, uh, that's great. All right, so the deployment has finished again. Let's switch to Chrome. Let's now go to services. Let's look for DynamoDB. Let's open that management console. And let's see what we have here. I'm gonna go open up tables. And there you can see I have awesome API dev users table. It has one read capacity. It has one write capacity. And if I open it up, and I open up the item section, you can see that an item should have at least a user ID because that is the key uh, of our table. And I can see that here as well, primary partition key is the user ID, which is of type string. So those were some simple examples, but what if you want to deploy uh, another resource? Well, Amazon has great documentation for this, and I've already opened this up in another Chrome tab. So this is the URL. I will share that in the video description. And this contains a template reference and you can browse a template reference per AWS resource. And if I open that up, you can see all the resources that you can deploy through CloudFormation and this also through serverless.yaml. And here's, for example, a DynamoDB table. And if you open that up, you can see some notes about it. And you can also see the syntax that you can use. So if I scroll down, I can see here, this is the JSON syntax to deploy a DynamoDB table. But of course, we're more interested in the YAML syntax example. And uh, here it is, Amazon has this for all the resources that you can deploy. And you can actually take this code, copy it, and then put it under a resource in your serverless.yaml file. So as you can see, this is the exact same uh, layout that we've used uh, in our config file. You give it a type and then you give it some properties and Amazon does a really good job of showing you what all the properties are. And then if you scroll down, it even shows more information about each property and it says what the property is, if it is required or not, what type you should give it. Should you give it a string? Should you give it an array? Should it be a number? and so on and so on. So this is a really great website to check how you can deploy other AWS resources through your serverless.yaml file. So that was it for this video. If you have some questions, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.